about step three. The game has got to be able to express itself back to the player. Now, at this point, I think we all deserve to pat ourselves on the back. We're doing a pretty good job there. Oh, there's lots of room for improvement, but this is not one of the major problems in computer game design. In fact, there are some people out there who are, who are really overdoing it. I mean, these guys put all of their time and energy into step three. They spend all of their time, their programmer time, their RAM, their disk space, their CPU cycles, everything they've got, they put into the graphics and the sound and the animation that allows them to express themselves back to the audience. Now, what's particularly bothersome about this to me is the attitude that it bespeaks towards the audience. I mean, these guys don't give a damn about their audience. They don't care to listen to what the audience says. They don't care to think about what it says and develop an interesting reaction. All they care about is what they're going to show off to their audience. And people call me conceited? <laughs> I don't think, I don't like that at all. I think it's dumb. So, if we're going to have good interaction, we've got to do all three steps well. We cannot afford to sacrifice steps one and two for step three. We've got to listen to the player and what he says. We've got to think about what he says and develop an interesting reaction to it. And we've got to express that reaction back to the player. Okay, that sounds fairly good, but uh, there's still a problem here. Why bother? I mean, whoever said that interactivity was important in the first place? I mean, where is it written in stone that interactivity is great? Whoever saw Chris Crawford coming down from Mount Sinai with stone tablets to say, Thou shalt have interactivity. Why do we need it? After all, let's be practical here. We're in the business of selling entertainment, not interactivity. You don't see people walking in the store saying, Hey, give me 30 bucks worth of interactivity here. <laughs> they don't care about interactivity. What they want is entertainment. So let's keep our eyes on the ball here. We're in the business of selling entertainment. If we can deliver entertainment without putting an ounce of interactivity into it, who needs it? Well, <laughs> gee, uh... That is a pretty strong argument if you think about it. So uh, let's see if I can answer that. Let me, uh, let me focus on one magic word in that argument. We're in the business of selling entertainment. If we're going to be practical here, let's talk about business and all that it implies. In particular, the fact that business implies competition. Because, face it, you have competition. And when I say competition, I'm not talking about all these, these other talentless dorks in the audience who, unlike you and I, don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they don't have no competition at all. No. When I talk about competition, I'm talking about the big boys. I'm talking about Hollywood. I'm talking about New York publishing giants. I'm talking about radio, television, magazines, the big boys with big bucks to spend. That's who you're taking on. And look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you puny, <laughs> naked, poor dirt farmer of a computer game designer, you're going to take on the big boys. Right. <laughs> Okay, look, I'll humor you. You're David taking on Goliath. You're nimble-footed, agile, <laughs> clever, smart. You're going to somehow take on Goliath with your basis of competitive advantage. Okay, David, what do you have in that little uh, bag of stones at your, uh, at your belt? What stones do you have in there that you might be able to take on Goliath with? Well, I know an obvious choice. Graphics. Well, yes, of course, those, those beautiful pictures you put into the program, those, those nifty keen images, those full-color pictures of guys with big swords and gals with big breasts. Yeah, that's your basis of competitive, competitive advantage, isn't it? Well, not quite. See, the big boys can do graphics, too. 
And they can do a graphics a lot better than you can. Any 14-year-old in the country can walk into the corner poster shop and buy himself a poster of guys with big swords and gals with big breasts, considerably superior to anything you can do on a home computer in this century and costing far less. In other words, when it comes to graphics, the big boys have got you skunked. Okay? How about animation? I mean, your images aren't static and dull like some poster. Your images ooh. You can make those little men run around. You can make those little go pit pat, pit pat, pit pat. You can, uh, you can have explosions and graphics and action on the screen. Yes, that's your basis of competitive advantage, isn't it? Well, actually, uh, the big boys have already thought of this. They came up with the idea a little while ago. It's called moving pictures. <laughs> and any 14-year-old in the country can walk into the corner video store and rent himself a moving picture for one dollar. The, the animation and graphics of which I assure you far exceed in quality and quantity anything that you can do on a home computer in this century. In other words, when it comes to animation, the big boys are stepping on you. Okay, well, uh, what else do we have? Oh, sound, of course. Yeah, all those great little sounds you work into your programs that you sweat over so long. You know, those wugga wugga wuggas and those chomp chomp chomps and those zip zap zaps. Yeah, that's how you'll beat Goliath. Well, <laughs> right. When any 14-year-old in the country can walk into the corner record store and buy himself a compact disc containing 60 minutes or more of high-quality digitally recorded sounds, far exceeding in quality and quantity, anything you can do on a home computer in this century. In other words, when it comes to sound, the big boys have clobbered you again. Okay. Jeez, is there anything left? Well. How about text? I mean, all those beautiful sentences we, uh, we put together, those, those, those wonderful, miraculous paragraphs that take advantage of the most powerful graphics technology known to man, the human imagination, that can draw up vast panoramas of magnificence and glory. Yes, that's our basis of competitive advantage, isn't it? Right. When any 14-year-old in the country can walk into the corner bookstore and buy himself two megabytes of text for $5.95, and he doesn't need $1,000 worth of hardware to read it either. In other words, the big boys can do this better and cheaper than you can. <coughs> oh, gee, uh, David, it looks like you're getting clobbered here. Is there anything left available for you to use? Well, golly gee, what about interactivity? I mean, think about it. There's, there's no questioning your ability to do interactivity in a computer game. I mean, yeah, that's easy and obvious. Everybody knows that computer games are interactive. The only question is, have the big boys already beaten you to the punch? Can they be more interactive? Well, consider. How about graphics? Can, can uh... Can you interact with the poster? Well, maybe you'd like to, but I don't think so. How about, uh, how about a movie? Can you interact with a movie? I know some people who think you can. I say you can't. I mean, you can watch Star Wars, and you can stand there, and when Luke Skywalker is about to do something tragically stupid, you can say, no, no. Don't do it! And he's gonna do it, I guarantee you. <laughs> Sit there and watch that movie a hundred times. You can beg, you can plead, you can argue, you can cajole, and he's still gonna do it every single time because he's not listening to you. <laughs> not thinking about what you're saying and developing a reaction to it. All he's doing is expressing what he did years and years ago. You can't interact with a movie. And the same thing goes with sound, wherever it fell. Here it is. You can't interact with music. You can sit here and listen to the Beatles. You can sing along with the Beatles. You can dance with the Beatles. But if you decide, hey, what if we make it, guys, Lucy in the Sky with emeralds? They're not going to change it. They're going to keep singing diamonds over and over again. <laughs> you can't change a compact disc because it can't listen to you. It can't think about what you did and, and develop a reaction to it. 
All it can do is express itself. And the same thing goes with a book. You can't interact with a book. You can yell at it, you can get excited by it, afraid of it, your little heart can go pity pat, pity pat, pity pat, but you can't interact with a book because it can't listen to you, it can't think about what you did. The only technology that you can interact with is a computer technology. That is the only possible one that can do it. So, looking at these five basic technologies, the question is, which one is your basis of competitive advantage? And to help you along with this decision, let me point out that the situation you face is black and white. I mean, it's not as if the graphics you can do on your home computer are almost as good as what they can do in a poster. If you just tried a little bit harder, you'd be able to compete with them. No, they got you beat cold. And the same thing goes with a movie. They're completely outclassing you. And with sound and with books, there's no way you can come close to what they can do. And just as well, there's no way they can come close to what you can do. In other words, the situation we find here is black, 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 and white. Given that, is there anybody in this room who has any difficulty figuring out which of these five features is our true basis of competitive advantage? <laughs> <laughs>